The other example I love to give is you take a piece of paper, a normal bit of paper, you fold it once, it doesn't look any different. You fold it again, it looks slightly thicker. But you fold that piece of normal paper 42 times and it goes from the earth to the moon. And you can see Hey folks, Prof JP here, Joel Pearson. I am a professor of neuroscience, psychology, here at the University of New South Wales in sunny Sydney, Australia, with all the beaches, crocodiles and sharks. That's right, so I'm a professor, I do a lot of research, we have a big lab here. And now, yep, I'm also trying to teach you guys some things and do some stuff for outside the university. So today I wanna to talk about artificial intelligence. But I'm really sick of hearing about all the AI companies, the tech stocks, this and that, and the compute power, the amount of money. That's not what I wanna talk about. That's not what I think is important for us as humans. I wanna talk about the AI revolution and how it's gonna affect us, the psychological side of the AI revolution. I think it's safe to say that AI is gonna affect everything that uses electricity, right? Sounds like a big call, but yeah, everything that uses electricity will change or be disrupted by AI over the coming decade. And that means a lot, right? We're talking education, of course jobs, we're gonna lose a lot of jobs. We may even lose them all at some point. Organizations are gonna become AIs, governments are gonna become AIs, and whole economies are gonna transform, right? They're gonna become just driven by AIs, hidden somewhere in the internet. So what's gonna happen? When we get big change like this, it can be very disruptive. It can be uncomfortable. It creates uncertainty. And it's not a matter of if AI goes bad, right? Even if AI is awesome, it's amazing, right? Even if it creates this renaissance, this utopia, it's still gonna be massively disruptive, right? We have data on lottery winners, for example. We know that a surprising number of people that win the lottery end up regretting it. It messes up their lives, they lose friends, they end up losing their money, they get drug addictions, right? Big positive change can be really disruptive. So even if AI is tremendously positive, right? It's a utopia. It can still create tremendous disruption, negativity, anxiety, stress, all these things. We know that uncertainty, simply not knowing what's gonna happen next, is like a fear stimulus, it's scary. It's like looking at a venomous spider or a snake, right? That limbic system, that parts of our brain becomes active in the face of uncertainty or even ambiguity. So think about this, we've got the next decade coming of AI revolution. We're gonna be out of our comfort zones for more or less a decade, right? And that's gonna be full of uncertainty. And for some people that's gonna create a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress. So I'm trying to focus the conversation to that, to how to deal on the human side of things with this AI revolution. How to maintain our humanity, how to maintain our mental health in the face of all this disruptive change, right? It's gonna hurt if we're losing our jobs, including universities, right? I don't know what's gonna to happen to my job at a university. So maybe you're thinking, come on, Joel, this is all a bristle, just hot air. It's a bit of steam, this is all gonna blow over. A couple of months, by next year, the AI thing will have settled down. It's all gonna be just back to normal. I just don't think that's the case. So technology and AI, in this case, is changing at exponential rates. And exponential change sits in our blind spot. We're this cognitive bias for seeing things in linear manners, right? We're very used to measuring things in inches or centimeters, right? linear units, each step we take is the same distance, right? Get this, if we took exponential steps in 25 steps, we've walked around the globe. It doesn't compute. We're not used to thinking in that way. The other example I love to give is you take a piece of paper, a normal bit of paper, you fold it once, it doesn't look any different. You fold it again, it looks slightly thicker. But you fold that piece of normal paper 42 times and it goes from the earth to the moon. And you can see we're just not good at getting exponential change. So what does that mean? It means a lot of us are gonna under predict the AI revolution. We're not gonna see it coming until it's right here or it's too late in other words. So that's part of the reason I'm trying to do these videos. I'm trying to get awareness out there for everyone about the psychological side of the AI revolution. So we're gonna need AI specific change models. What does that mean? It means we need to figure out ways, guidebooks, frameworks, for safely adjusting and bringing AI into our lives. We need to educate ourselves about what AI is, how it's changing lives. We need to see other stories. We need to socialize and talk to our friends and colleagues about this. We need to write and build our own roadmap for how we're gonna try AI. How we're gonna dip our toe in the AI waters. And if it's not working, we're gonna go back and write another roadmap. And why we're doing this 
we're going to focus on thinking about uncertainty, nip in the butt any mental health challenges that come up. And you're going to feel a resistance to change. That's completely normal with this kind of thing. You're going to want to run away, hide in the woods, go and buy a cabin out in the middle of nowhere and unplug from all technology. And sure, you can probably do that, but AI is going to be a utility, right? It almost is already. So we're not going to be able to live and do the things we want to do in our lives without AI. So we're going to need to find ways to bring it into our life safely, without getting hurt, without getting stressed. We don't want to be stressed. We need to learn about emotional intelligence, emotional awareness. We need to be aware of when our body's reacting. We need to think about being resilient, all this good stuff. I know it can sound scary, so AI is coming very quickly for all of us. But with the right framework, with the right AI specific change model, we can thrive throughout this revolution. Not only survive it, but thrive. We can maintain our humanity. We can be more human at the end of this. We can focus on the quality of our lives, right? We can come out way better than we are at the beginning and make AI work for us and not steal our humanity and not throw us under the bus. So that's the first taste at where I think we should be focusing with the AI revolution. The whole thing about the Terminator scenario, AI, you know, taking over the world and killing us all, that's really a misdirect. It's a bit of a head fake. That's not where we need to be thinking. We need to be focusing right now on the psychological effects of AI. So I hope that's helpful. I hope it's not too scary. I hope it's not too anxiety provoking. All right, everyone, that's it for now. Um, if you liked what you heard, if you didn't like what you heard, if it made you feel a little bit scared, tell me in the comments below. Let everyone hear what your AI experience is like. The more we socialize this, the easier it will be for everyone. Don't forget to click subscribe and I'll see you next time.